By the end of this video, you're going to be solving these absolute value inequalities like they're nothing. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to get you there. We're going to start by solving this pretty quick absolute value inequality where the absolute value is already by itself. And we'll move on to some harder examples, like when the absolute value is not by itself. And when there is no solutions, we'll do an example where there's infinite solutions. And I'll even give you a much grosser example to deal with where we have fractions in the absolute value. And I'll give you a little trick for this one so that you won't have to get common denominators everywhere to solve it. And after we go through all that, I'll give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And if you're looking for the notes for this video, and guys, we're not just talking about any old notes here. Like why do people keep thinking that these, these notes, they're printable. They have a QR code attached that will take you back to the video. There's also timestamps for every single problem we do in this video. That is the kind of premium product that we're talking about here with these notes. And if you want the link to those notes, it's right in the description. Also in the description, I have an extra video where you and I will go through and solve more absolute value inequalities and some absolute value equations as well. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. So we're gonna start off with this first inequality here. And when you see a absolute value on one side with an inequality, here's all you have to do. What we're gonna do is we're going to write the 2x minus 4 is greater than 10 without the absolute value and we'll also write 2x minus 4 and we're going to flip the inequality so instead of being greater than it's going to be less than here and we're also going to change the sign of the 10 so instead of being positive 10 it's going to be negative 10 and right there you've already set up your two inequalities which you need to solve so let's solve for x we can do that by adding 4 on both sides for the inequality on the left. And that'll give us that 2x is greater than 14. Then we can divide by 2 on both sides. And that'll get x completely by itself, giving us x is greater than 7. So already one of our inequalities are solved. Now next, it's pretty much the same exact process or it is the same exact process for the second inequality, we're going to add 4 on both sides, giving us 2x is less than negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. And we're going to divide 2 on both sides to get that x is less than negative 3. And that is our two inequalities already solved for. But there's other ways your teacher might ask you to format your answers, like, for example, on a number line. So if you were asked to format your answers on a number line, you have your zero mark right there. And you can do negative three on this side, seven over here. And then the first question that you have to ask is, are you going to use open circles or closed circles? And here we're gonna be using open circles for negative three and seven. The reason why is because if we were using closed circles, that would be because X could possibly equal seven or equal negative three. And that would be if there was a line under here to say greater than or equal to seven. But since there's no line, X can't be equal to seven, it can only be greater than seven. And so we leave an open circle, and since it's greater than, we shade all the X values that are greater than seven. We're also gonna shade all of the X values that are less than negative three. So we're gonna shade to the left from negative three. And that's gonna give us our completed number line. X could be here, or it could be here. And since I said or, we're going to write or here and circle that answer. Okay? Now there's one other way your teacher could ask for your answer, and that's for it to be written in interval notation. So how do we do that? Well, for interval notation, let's look at our number line. Let's look at where our shading is. It's going from negative infinity to negative 3. So we'll go negative infinity to negative 3. And with interval notation, we either use parentheses or brackets. With infinities, we always use parentheses. And parentheses mean we're, we're not including that endpoint. And negative 3, we're not including negative 3 because, well, x can't be equal to negative 3. It's not less than or equal to negative 3. It's just less than. And so there's a parentheses here. If it was less than or equal to, we'd use a bracket. And you'll see that later. And we also have 7 to infinity. And we're not including 7. We're not including infinity. And to say it's this range and this range, we do a little union symbol in between them. It's a little u. And that's our answer in interval notation. So that's the three different ways that your answer could be asked for. Now moving on to the second problem here, this is essentially the same kind of problem as problem one, except 
now the absolute value isn't completely by itself. We have this three being multiplied and this four being subtracted. So we have to start by isolating the absolute value. That's the first step. So we can start isolating the absolute value by adding four on both sides. And doing that, we're gonna get three times the absolute value of nine X plus two is less than or equal to negative one plus four is a three. Then we divide by three on both sides and we get the absolute value of nine X plus two is less than or equal to three divided by three and that's one. And I'll write that one a little bit nicer. There we go. So now the absolute value is completely isolated. And what that means is we can do the same inequality thing that we did before where we split it up like this. The first inequality that we make is going to be the same exact thing that you see right here just without the absolute value. And the second is going to be the same except the inequality is going to be flipped so instead of being less than here it will be greater than and we're going to change the sign of the number on the right so instead of one it will be negative one. So now we can start solving these inequalities for x and we can start in the one on the left by subtracting two on both sides and that's the exact same thing that we'll actually be doing in the inequality on the right so we might as well do those together. So on the inequality on the left we get 9x is less than or equal to a 1 minus 2 that's negative 1 and on the inequality on the right we're going to get 9x is greater than or equal to negative 1 minus 2 that's negative 3. Now to solve for x in both inequalities, we just divide by 9 on both sides. And what we end up getting is that x is less than or equal to negative 1 over 9. And in the other inequality, we get that x is greater than or equal to, well, this fraction can be simplified here. We can divide by 3 on top and bottom. And that will give us a negative 1 over 3. So those are our two solutions for x. Now we can put our answer into a number line here. I'll draw the number line. Here is 0. And then we have our two negative numbers here that we got to put on the number line. We have negative 1 ninth and negative 1 third. And don't make the mistake of switching these two. 1 third is larger than 1 ninth. Think about it, if you have you know, one third of a whole pizza to yourself, that's a lot larger of a slice than having one ninth of a pizza. One ninth is like essentially just one slice because pizzas are generally cut into eights. I don't know how you eat your pizza. Let's not talk about that. All right, so getting back to this, the first question is, are we gonna have closed circles or open circles? And here we're gonna have closed circles because X can be equal to negative one third and X can be equal to negative one over nine. That's what these lines underneath the regular inequality symbol says. It's less than or equal to. It's greater than or equal to. And now we just have to figure out the shading. X can be less than or equal to negative 1 over 9. And that means we shade to the left. And X can be greater than or equal to negative 1 third. So we're shading to the right of negative 1 third. And you can see what's happening. We're talking about this area here. This is not going to be or, it's going to be and. Because when we had or, when we had the or case, that was two separate regions. It was this or it was this. But now we only have one region where these answers can be. And there's two conditions for that region. X has to be greater than negative one over three and X has to be less than or equal to negative one over nine. And that's why we say and. Now there's of course interval notation that we have to talk about still. And for that now, our shading is going from negative one third to negative one over nine, but we're not gonna use parentheses now since we are including the endpoints. When we include the endpoints, we use brackets. And so that's our answer in interval notation. Moving on to problem three, this one probably looks a lot simpler than the last problem because the absolute value is already by itself. But if you look really closely here, you're going to see a problem. I mean, it's saying the absolute value of something can be less than or equal to a negative number, that can't happen. The absolute value of something can only be something positive or it can be zero because there's also the absolute value of zero, right? Which is zero. So the absolute value of anything is either gonna be zero or a positive number. It cannot be less than or equal to a negative number. And so here there's actually gonna be no solutions. And 
and for the number line you can mark off zero but you're not shading anything there's no closed circles no open circles because there's really there's no solutions here and if you want to do this in interval notation you just use the empty set which is this little symbol here the circle with a line through it so the takeaway here is like you know this might have caught you out of left field you're like when do we need to care about this no solutions thing is this something that's just going to randomly pop up here's my tip when you get the absolute value by itself look at it once you've isolated this thing, look at it and be like, okay, well, does this inequality make sense? Is there no solutions? There's also a case we're going to talk about in this video where there's infinite solutions, or is it just a regular inequality that I can solve? That's what you'll have to do once you isolate the absolute value. So moving on to problem four here, let's start by isolating that absolute value. That's always our first step. And to do that, all we need to do is just subtract two on both sides. In doing that, we get the absolute value of 3x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 minus 2, which is 0. And now that we have that absolute value isolated, it's by itself on the left-hand side, let's look at this inequality. Specifically, let's look at this part. It's the absolute value of something being greater than or equal to 0. And well, yeah, that's what an absolute value does. The absolute value of anything is going to be greater than or equal to zero. It doesn't matter what x you put in, the absolute value of whatever is in there is going to be greater than or equal to zero. It can be zero or it can be positive, but it can't be negative. So here, this would be an example of infinite solutions. And that's gonna be the answer here. Now, if you wanted to do that on a number line, you're just gonna shade everywhere. So here's zero and here's us shading just everywhere. And then if we want to do our answer in interval notation, that's just going to be from negative infinity to infinity. And remember with infinities, we always use parentheses. So moving on to our last problem here, we have a gross looking absolute value. I mean, there's some fractions in there, yeah, and it's greater than one. Now the absolute value here is already by itself. So we need to look and see, well, is there going to be no solutions or is there going to be infinite solutions? Is, is that going to be something we have to deal with here? Or can we just solve it like regular? And here we're going to be able to solve it like regular. And how I know that is because if we're going to get no solutions or infinite solutions, then when the absolute value is by itself, the number that you'll get over here is going to be zero or something negative. Here it's, it's a positive number, so we're all good. But if you get zero or negative over here, once you get that absolute value by itself, you seriously need to take a look at this and see, oh, well, is there no solutions or infinite solutions? Is that a case that I'm dealing with here? Okay, so let's solve this like normal. Remember how we did this. I know it's been a little bit since we've done a problem where we actually could solve it regularly. We drop the absolute value for the first inequality that we write. And then for the second inequality that we write, we keep this, but we're going to flip this sign. Instead of greater than, it's going to be less than. And then we're gonna change the sign of the one. So instead of being positive one, it'll be negative one. Now at this point, you might be like, well, do I have to find common denominators? Because I, I've, you've got all those fractions in there, right? You're not gonna to wanna to deal with that. And so there is a way around it. There's a little trick that you can use. I'll let you in on it. What you can do is you can multiply both sides by what that common denominator would have been. The common denominator between three and four is what? It's 12. So multiply by 12 on both sides and you're gonna watch those fractions disappear. You can do that for the other inequality too. Let's look at this first inequality and multiply that 12 through. Multiplying the 12 through to the two thirds, we get a 12 times two, that's 24. 24 divided by three is eight. So that's an eight X. Then we have the 12 being multiplied through to the negative one over four. 12 times one is 12 divided by four is three. So we get eight X minus three, and that's gonna be greater than 12. So that's our first inequality done. Now, this is the same thing as what we have right here. So again, we're gonna get eight X minus three. And this time we have negative one times 12, that's gonna give us a negative 12. So now we can solve both of these inequalities by adding three on both sides for each of them. And that'll give us eight X is greater than 15. And in the other inequality, we'll get eight X is less than a negative 12 plus three, that's gonna be negative nine. Then dividing by eight on both sides. 
of both inequalities. We get x is greater than 15 over 8. And in the other inequality, we get x is less than negative 9 over 8. So we can put our answers on a number line now. We have our 0, put 15 over 8 on one side, put negative 9 over 8 on the other. And now are we going to use open circles or closed circles here? Well, we're going to use open circles because we're not including negative 9 over 8, we're not including 15 over 8. X is not less than or equal to negative 9 over 8, it's just less than negative 9 over 8. It can't be equal to it. And the same goes for the 15 over 8. So since it's less than negative 9 over 8, we're going to shade all of the x values that are less than negative 9 over 8. And since it's greater than 15 over 8, we shade all the x values that are greater than 15 over 8. And so x can be in this region, or it can be in this region. So this is an or. Lastly, we write our answer in interval notation. You can see we're going from negative infinity to negative 9 over 8. And we're not including, remember we always use parentheses for infinities, and we're not including negative 9 over 8. It's, it's not a closed circle here. We're not including it. It can't be negative 9 over 8, so we use parentheses. And then we have 15 over 8 to infinity. Again, we use parentheses for both. Since it's this and this, we use our little union sign. And that's our answer written in interval notation. So that is absolute value inequalities in a nutshell. And if you feel pretty good with this, then here's another problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Here we have the absolute value of two minus six X plus five is greater than 15. So try this problem out. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now remember, I do have that extra video linked in the description where you and I will go through more absolute value inequalities and more absolute value equations as well. We'll do 10 of those problems in total. So if you want some more practice, especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff, I highly recommend you check out that link right in the description and might as well grab the notes while you're at it. Lastly, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. If you're not going to subscribe for me and, and me helping you with math, then you can at least subscribe for this scrunchy accent I got going on here. I, I actually, I kind of like it. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video, guys, and I will see you soon.